chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1. We're in a series on Wednesday nights that we've titled Going to the Next Level. 1 Peter chapter 1. If you would please stand for the reading of God's Word if you're able to. 1 Peter chapter 1. If you look with me down in verse 13 is where we'll begin. It says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. If you would look back in verse 13, and I, where we'll take our, our text tonight. It says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I'd like to preach a message I've titled, Taking Your Thinking to the Next Level. Taking Your Thinking to the Next Level. And let's pray. Father, we come to you, Lord, this evening and realize that something that is so important in our lives is seldom considered, and that is what we think upon. Lord, I pray now that you give us understanding. Help us to realize the attack that is placed on our thinking by Satan, by this world, and even by our flesh. And Lord, may we desire to take that thinking to the next level. Instead of allowing it to stay in the, the lower areas of life. And Lord, I pray now that you be glorified. Strengthen us now through thy word. Thy word is truth. May that truth enter into our hearts and into our minds. And direct us tonight for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. He said, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. In that day and time, men wore robes that went down to the heel. And it was not uncommon for them to, to be involved in activities. And, and you'll see it referred to in different portions of Scripture where it says they, gird, they girded up their loins. Okay, and this verse, it says, gird up the loins of your mind, but gird up your loins, which would be in this area here. What they would literally do if they didn't, with that being long, if they was going to have to run, if they was going to have to fight, if they was going to have to work or do a lot of moving around, they would gird up that robe. And basically what it is, they had a waistband, somewhat like a belt. They would reach back this way grab the back of the, of the robe, and they would pull it up like that, and they would tuck it in like that. And that was called girding up their loins. It would make basically like britches out of that robe is what it would do. And that was girding it up. That way they could move freely. They could fight. They could run. Uh, there was a lot of uh, anything that they was doing that, would, that, that, that that would hinder them. Because if they didn't, it could hinder them. In a great way. I mean, if they was in a fight, and they, they could trip over it. If they would, and they could lose a battle. They could, I mean, if they're trying to work and carry something, they could, they could trip over it or whatever. And, and so they would literally pull it up and they would gird it into a belt or a, a girdle or a, uh, a band that was around, roughly around their waist. Well, now we see the scripture here that he's saying, gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up the loins of your mind. As I was studying on taking our thinking to the next level, I, I begin to think on this verse. And basically what it is is that this uh, custom here that they had, they, as they would tuck it in, it would free them up to do that which they should do or be able to do. And it wouldn't hinder them. What we're needing today is find here, this portion of Scripture, we see that we're instructed to gird up our loins of our mind that we may keep our hearts and minds on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the hope of His coming. Notice there what he says there is in, in verse uh, 13. He says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for grace that is to be brought unto you at the, what? The revelation of Jesus Christ at His coming. And so he, he said, listen, he said, your mind needs to be uh, uh, protected or it needs to not be hindered by the things of this world. And so there's the, the needing of in your life, in my life, of girding up the loins of our minds so that we will not be hindered by the, the things of this world or by wrong thinking. I, I dare say that we don't understand the battle that's fought in our minds. We don't understand the spiritual battle that's going on around us that affects our minds. 
And yet the scripture is plain about that, and I'm not going to get into the battle part there, but uh, I'll talk about it a little bit. But uh, we're to gird up the loins of our mind, and it's to help keep us from the old way of thinking. The old way of thinking. You say, what do you mean the old way of thinking? I mean before you got saved. Before you begin to think on the Lord Jesus Christ. Before you begin to study the Word of God. To keep you from falling back into that type of thinking. It's to gird up your mind. And we find there, again, look here in, in verse 13 and 14. It says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And look at verse 14. It says, And obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. He said, before you got saved, he said, you was ignorant of some things and the lust of the flesh. The Bible goes on and talks about the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is of the world. He said, you were ignorant of, of the things of God. You were ignorant of what you should think on. And so you just thought like the, everybody else and you just thought upon these things. You just had these different thoughts and they just were free to do whatever they wanted to do. And they hindered you and they stumbled you in your life. You, you say, well, preacher, how, how's that? Well, look at the world. Look how the world thinks. And look at the, what's happening today. We've got, you know, let's just take something. We, we mentioned Brother Parsons signing, or Brother Parsons, well, uh, Governor Parsons signing the, the bill of uh, uh, banning abortion uh, after eight weeks and different things in that and not going to get into that. But then you've got the, the other people who are, saying that it's not a life, it's not a living creature that that, that, that mother is carrying, that it, it's just a piece of flesh. Well, where do they get that? It's the way of their thinking. It's their ignorance. I'm not trying to be crude. I'm just saying it's the ignorance of the flesh of not understanding the things of God. And not thinking upon things from the way that God looks at things. And so there's that ignorance there. We look at those who, about the abortion, and boy, we can, we can really get bent out of shape with that, and, and rightly so. We can look at the drugs and we say, man, why, why, what's going on? Why, why, what are they thinking? We can look at people's lives destroyed on, on alcohol and say, man, what are they thinking? Destroying their homes, destroying their marriages, destroying their children. And we're thinking, what are they thinking? The same thing you and I thought before we got saved. It's whatever comes. Whatever comes our direction. The things that they see on TV. The immorality. The wickedness. And it affects their thinking, and they think upon that, and the music that they hear affects their thinking. And you can say what you want to, but your music and the things that you watch, and I'll get in a minute, affect what you think. And they affect your life. And so he says, gird up the loins so that you don't think like you used to think. He said, change the way you're thinking. And so as I was... Looking at this, I begin to think about how that we need to take our, our thinking to the next level. You see, we struggle with the lust of this world. And 1 John 2.16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. These are the things. Remember, he talks about in verse 14, he said, Not fashion yourselves according to the former lust. And so it's those things that, that begin to feed the mind, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, begins in our thinking. That's where that all begins, in our thinking. But not only that, it grows in our thinking. You begin to think on it, then you begin to, it, you begin to expound on it, or you begin to make it bigger. You think more about it. it. It begins to grow in your thinking. Then it controls our thinking, and then it controls our lives. And that's why we've got to gird up the loins of our minds. Much of the Christians' battles and struggles are, are and they begin in our thinking. You stop and think about some of the battles that you got. Where does it begin? In your thinking. In your thinking. 
So, uh, I, no, I, it, it, it began the way when somebody said something to me. And you begin to think on it. And it began to grow. And before long, it began to control you. And so, our thinking, we struggle with it. In Proverbs chapter 23 and verse, 40, and verse 7, it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Our thinking makes us what we are. We feed off of it. And so we need to gird up and block the easy access to our thinking. If you don't want the former lust and the things of this world controlling you and controlling your thinking, then you've got to block that easy access to your thinking. We find there in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5 says, Casting down imaginations, that's thinking, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Otherwise, he said, hey, listen, he said, we need to, we need to capture these thoughts and bring them into subjection. Bring them into obedience unto the Lord. Bring our thinking into obedience unto the Lord. Otherwise, begin to think on things that the Lord would want us to think on. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we need to gird up the loins of our mind. We need to block that easy access into our mind by the things of this world that would draw you away and, and hinder you. Because all around us there's things, and it doesn't matter who you are, there's always going to be those things that's going to be presented before you, going to come before you, whether you look, you're in a, in a line at the supermarket or Walmart and you see a magazine that's got stuff on it, shouldn't be on there, or you're, you're, you're standing here and somebody's talking and you hear what they say and it's, it, it's foul, it's, vul excuse me, it's vulgar and and it, it gets into your mind and you're thinking, or, or maybe you sit down to watch uh, uh, the news or the weather on TV and they, they put something on there that, that uh, uh, causes some thinking. Or You're always subject to things that will attack your thinking. And so you have to gird up the loins of your mind. Otherwise, you're, you're not going to stop everything from coming in. But if you block the easy access, the easy access, then you can battle much of the rest of it. And so girding up the loins of our mind is, you might say, blocking the easy access to your mind. In 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's looking to get into your mind with things that are said, things that you see, things that you hear, things that, that uh, you're around, and even things that you would never think would come into your mind. Have you ever, just out of nowhere, something pop in your mind think, oh my, where'd that come from? Can I tell you where it come from? Satan walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And he can impress thoughts upon you and I. It's a spiritual battle. So what we've got to do is begin to work at blocking the easy access into our minds. He goes on, and in verse 9 there it says, whom resist? He said, okay, he's the one coming at your mind. He's, he's wanting to attack your mind because he realizes that if he can get your mind, he can get your heart, and he can get your life. If he can get your mind to get you thinking on things, he can get your heart, and he can get your life. He can get your soul if you're saved, but he can get your mind and your heart and your life. So the Lord says, whom resist steadfast. If we're going to block it, you're going to have to fight it. A lot of times Christians don't fight. We don't try to block it. We say, man, where did I come from? And just let it go. 
But he says, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Satan is sure to try to get you to think upon those things that will draw you away from those godly things. So the actions of girding up the loins of your mind is to cut off Satan's easy access to, to your thinking and the influence that it will have in your life. James chapter 4 gives us kind of a, a formula, you might say, for it. Now, I'm going to read these, and I'm going to go back and hit some words in here. I want you to think about them for a second. He says, submit yourselves, in verse 7, says, submit yourselves, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Verse 8 says, draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. First of all, let me point out, if you don't do that, notice what he's saying it happens in your life. You become what? Double-minded. What's a double-minded person do? They're trying to think about the things of God, but yet they're entertaining the thoughts of the world. We're trying to balance the two. Instead of cutting off the world in our thinking and fighting against the things of the world that's in our mind that will control our hearts, control our minds, and control our lives, we try to do this. We try to say, okay, uh, those thoughts are there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to think more about this over here. I'm going to think about the godly things. Well, that, that sounds good, doesn't it? Doesn't it sound good? But you ain't going to do it. They're still going to be there. That's just like me doing this here, saying, okay, let me give you a, a, a glass of milk. Let me pour some gasoline in. Try to just drink the milk. But they mix together. And so we've got to get rid of the things that we shouldn't be thinking about. And so we've got to block the access, the easy access. Notice what he says here again, James 4, he says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. A lot of people don't like that word submit because it means to humble, to become at at the at, 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 at obedient unto the Lord. That is to get God involved in this thing. He said, resist the devil. Instead of just whining about the thoughts, do something about it. Resist it. We'll talk about how to resist them here in a minute, but and the Bible says that if we'll resist him, if we'll draw nigh to God and we'll resist Satan, that he'll flee. He'll flee from us. We're to draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. And notice here that he says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. There's got to be a confession, Lord, I've had these thoughts. I know they're not right thoughts. Forgive me. That's asking for forgiveness. That's the cleansing. 1 John 1, 9. If, I, if we confess our sins, He is faithful just to what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He goes on, He says, and purify your hearts. See, the thinking has affected your heart. So we need to purify the heart by, with the things of God. By the washing of the Word of God. In our hearts and lives. In order to resist Satan, we must use the, the weapons of God. Jesus Christ himself. When Satan came at him and presented something to, to Jesus to think about, cast yourself off this pinnacle. Bow down to me and I'll give you all these. Turn these rocks to bread. Each time Jesus resisted him with what? It is written, the Word of God. Every person in this room, in order to resist Satan, Satan does not like the Word of God. So in order to resist him in your thinking, you need to use the Word of God. 
That's why the scripture says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I what? I might not what? Sin against thee. Well, how, how, how come that we hide it in our heart so that we can think upon it with our mind to resist Satan? And so that's the part of the girding up of our minds and resisting Satan. You see, that's a true battle that rages in many Christians daily in each of us. Is that battle? It may be anger. You get to thinking about something, you get angry. It may be jealousy. You get to thinking about this and thinking about that. And, and jealousy comes from thinking on things in the wrong perspective, doesn't it? I wish I had what they had. Well, why, do, why not think about it this way? Boy, I'm glad they got that. It's a way of our thinking, isn't it? Well, I don't like what he said. Maybe there was some truth in what he said. Maybe we could learn from it. Maybe if I thought about the fact that maybe they're lost or that they don't understand, I could change my way of thinking about them instead of becoming angry at them. And so there's so much involved in what we think on. So we need to gird up our, our minds to protect us from, from Satan getting in there and getting a foothold. You gird up your mind by this. First of all, you might want to write this down. By, first of all, by renewing it. Renewing your mind. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 it says, And be not conformed to this world. Otherwise, don't think like the world, don't act like the world, don't be like the world is. It says, be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and perfect will of God. Good and acceptable, perfect will of God. So we need to renew our mind. If our mind, if we're struggling with, with the, the, the wrong thoughts, we've got to renew it. Well, how do you renew your mind, preacher? How do you renew that mind? Starting with a fresh spirit. It's a, it's a starting with a fresh spirit. When you realize that, hey, listen, I'm having trouble thinking and uh, these things are coming in my, in my life and I need to gird up the, the loins of my mind. Realize that you need to renew it and that you need to refresh it. And, and the way that you do that in, in, in Psalms 51, 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. How do you do that? You draw an eye to God. You confess your sin. You confess to him that you're struggling with your thinking. And you start over with a fresh spirit, with a fresh desire. Renew that mind with the word of God. Renew that mind with, with, uh, with uh, 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 godly thinking and, and, and scripture and, and godly songs. You refresh it. There's something about when, when, you, when these thoughts come at you and everything, if you sit down and you get in the Word of God, it begins to refresh you, it begins to strengthen you again. The first thing you need to do is, is acknowledge it to God, Lord, I'm struggling with this thinking, and, and then begin to get in the Word of God and, and look at the Scripture, begin to, to read the Scripture, and begin to quote the Scripture, and get you a good godly song in there that magnifies and glorifies God. And before long, that mind is like, man, it's been flushed out, and it's, it's refreshed. So the first thing we need to do, we need to refresh our minds. Secondly, we need to realize the mind that we can have. You see what I mean? Well, in Philippians 2.5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We can have the mind of Christ. You see, well, preacher, I don't think that we'll ever attain unto that. No, not completely. But could I tell you something? If you don't have anything to shoot at, if you don't have a goal, if you don't have an example, you're not going to get anywhere. And so you set your goal and you set your, 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 your sights on, I want to think as Christ would think. And you ask the Lord to help you to think as Christ would think. It, don't ask Him to, uh, uh, Lord, would you help me to think as the preacher thinks? No. Think as Christ would think. Have the mind of Christ. Refresh your mind. 
then realize that you can have a, a mind, the mind of Christ, that you can think like the Lord wants you to think. And thirdly, replace the worldly thinking. Too many times we don't replace it, we just try to push it out. It's like anything in a person's life. If you don't replace what you remove from your life, it creates a vacuum and it'll suck it right back in. That's why people have trouble with habits. They try to break the habit, but they don't replace the habit with something good. And so they struggle. They struggle. My dad, years ago, he, he, he smoked. My grandpa smoked. And, and it was back, you know, they didn't think so much about the cancer and all that stuff and all that caused. And, and my dad realized that it, he, didn't want, he didn't want all that stuff and he, he wanted to quit smoking. He's having a hard time smoking or quitting smoking. So one of the things that he did, my grandmother told him, said, you'll quit in the certain, certain sign of the moon. He said, you won't have a... You won't have a desire to smoke anymore. And, uh, and that's the time, when you, it's the time when you're supposed to wean calves and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into all that. But anyway, but it works. I was with him. He threw his cigarettes out the window. Driving over, I was going over Pine Hill. Down in southeast Missouri. Threw them out the window like that. Pulled them out of his pocket. He always carried, carried a pack of cigarettes in his pocket right there. He just reached that pocket all the time. He's all, he reached that pocket. Threw him out the window. Anytime you'd see him after that, he had a pack of double mint gum in that pocket. And you'd see him reach up there and pull a piece of gum out and stick it in his mouth. He'd chew it for a while, spit it out. After a while, you'd see him reach up there and grab another piece of gum, stick it in his mouth, chew it. I know it's a poor example, but you know what he did? He replaced a habit of reaching to that pocket with something that wasn't going to affect him. Except for it affected the, the joints in his jaw and he had quick because they was popping and having problems <laughs> from chewing all the gum. <laughs> you see, you and I are creatures of habit and sometimes we've got to replace what we remove from our lives. So if you remove the wrong type of thinking, you need to replace it with something that's good thinking. You've got to put the right thing in there. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, it says this. Commit thy works unto the Lord. Otherwise, get yourself busy serving God. And thy thoughts shall be established. He said, if you'll get busy with God, he said, you'll be thinking on the things of serving God. Do you want one of the, the most Detrimental things to every Christian is this. Too much idle thinking time. You've heard the old saying, idle hands is the devil's playground or something like that. Workshop. You know what? There's a lot of truth to that. We've got to keep our minds busy thinking about the right thing. Don't give it the opportunity to pull back the, the wrong things to think on. Number one, again, renew it. Number two, realize the mind you can have. Number three is to, is to replace it. Isaiah 55, 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. We're to forsake those thoughts. Realize what they are. Say, I don't want to think on those things. you got to... You got to Deliberately say, I don't want to think on those things. And you've got to work on that. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he abundantly pardoned. We, we're all familiar with Philippians 4. And verse 8 says, finally, brethren, whatsoever, and this is, this is the replacing now. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, uh, are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So you begin to find the right things to think on. You say, well, 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 well I don't know hardly what to think on. Think on Scripture. Think on, think on, on people need to get saved and, and pray for them. 
Think on ways of serving the Lord and being a witness and testimony. Think on the goodness of God. Think on what God has done in your life, what He's doing in people's lives, what, what He wants to do in the world, and, 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 and begin to think on good things, lovely things. Think on people that get saved. Man, that, boy, when you get to think about, boy, man, ain't that great? Boy, they got saved, and, and it stirs your heart. Think on good things. Fill your heart and mind with good things to think on. Get you some good music, good godly music. I'm not talking about the about rat a tat tat and and uh, don't step on my blue suede shoes. I'm talking about I'm talking about some good godly music that you keep rolling in your mind and you think on those those songs that that leave a, 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 a something special in your heart and mind. Replacing, but thinking. He said, "Well, preacher, will it just be gone then? Oh, it's going to try to crowd its way back in." But what you're doing is you're trying to gird up the loins of your mind so that you can take it to the next level. You first have to gird up the loins of your mind and handle some of this stuff before you can go to the next level. Okay? And so once we, we've done that, then we need to take our thinking to the next level. I've already read Philippians 4, 8 there. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. If there be any virtue, if there be anything, any praise, think on these things. That is taking it to the next level because that's what you're thinking on. You're thinking on the good things. And that's taking your, 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 your thoughts that may have been anger, may have been jealousy, it may have been uh, 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 something else that you shouldn't be thinking on. It's taking it to the next level. Psalms 1. You want to take your, your thinking to the next level. Notice what he says here. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the city of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Look what happens. And he shall be like a, a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. When we meditate, what is meditation? It's thinking upon. What is he thinking on? He's thinking on the Word of God. So if you'll take Scripture and memorize it and begin to, to think on that, and, and, and you say, well, preacher, you know, how, how, do you, how, do you, how do you keep some Scripture before you do it? Hey, get you some three by five cards or, or, or something like that and, and clip it up in your, in your visor. Put some, some, some scripture on it that you want to memorize and just pop it down once in a while and read it and flip it back up and, and drive down the highway and think on that and, and memorize it and meditate upon it. Man, that verse means this and, and boy, that's a good verse for this and, and that's a good verse for this and, and change it out every once in a while. Get you another verse or two up there and think on that verse and, and meditate on that verse and, and let it soak into your heart and mind. And after a while you think, hmm, doesn't mean that you're going to be immune to some wrong thoughts, but you know what? You're going to get past a lot of them, have victory over a lot of them. Ephesians 5.19 says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. If you keep yourself busy... In those idle times when you just have time to think, if you keep yourself busy uh, 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 making melody unto the Lord, singing unto the Lord and, and praising Him and, and keeping a good song in, in your heart and mind uh, uh, towards God and thinking on that. And boy, I'll tell you what, you won't be thinking about uh, the junk that's on the TV. You'll be thinking about the, the, the glorious God that's in heaven. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts unto the Lord. You know what? If you're singing unto the Lord from your heart, it's pretty hard to sing from your heart to the Lord and be thinking bad things about somebody. Spend time talking and thinking on the Lord. Singing in your heart. Praying for others. Worshiping the Lord. 
Memorizing Scripture. Gird up the loins of your mind so that you can take your thinking to the next level. You see, Satan wants your mind. He wants you to think about things that are of no value in your life. He wants you to think about things that will pull you down instead of build you up. He wants to, you to think about things that will discourage you, not encourage you. He wants you to think about things that will, will cause you to be afraid, not strengthen you and cause you to rejoice. So that's why the Lord says, resist the devil. Draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. That's why he says in Philippians 4, 8, think on these things. Good things, honest things, things that are lovely, things that are good report, things that are pure. So that we can take our thinking from here to here. And our thinking will open up a whole new realm in the presence of God. Preacher, where you start? Acknowledging that we need to take our thinking to the next level. You know, sometimes we, 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 we haven't stopped and thought about the fact that our thinking, how much effect it has in our lives. And how that we need to bring that in control. Under the control of the Holy Spirit of God. Let's bow. Father, we thank you for loving us. And Lord, I pray that.